Hello and welcome to the YXT podcast. My name is Jason. I will be actually tech today. Today we got an awesome guest, Laura Nappy. She's a technologist. She's an author. She does a lot of amazing things. She's on social media. Laura, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So yes, I'm Laura. I am a radiation therapist, originally an x-ray tech. Um, I do have two books out there now. So one is for a review guide and one is um, a ma manual. Um, so I work full time as a radiation therapist. And also on the side, I do offer courses and tutoring for students who are preparing to be radiation therapists as well. So providing educational resources as well as uh, radiation therapy as well. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a lot. So it's a lot, yes, and, and and you're so young, you know, and, and that's the beautiful thing about radiology is there's so many opportunities. Um, so we'll talk about those uh, in a bit, but let's start off with your book. Like, how did you even get into becoming an author? Um, what were the, the steps you had to take to get here? How's it going and how can we get a hold of your book? Yeah, so it's it, it still like shocks me that I even can say I have a book out there. Um, so how it all started i've always been such a good note taker like i always want my own way of writing things that i've learned i've had teachers even compliment my note taking as well so it's just something that's always come natural to me um when i was in x-ray school i did the same thing i made my notes for the registry um and i actually i think i got a 97 or a 98 on the registry i can't remember exactly which one but it just showed me that like yeah my notes are reliable. So then when I went into um, radiation therapy school, I did the same thing. I made my own notes and I wound up with a 95 on the registry. So I gave my notes to some of my classmates who I think somebody was, one of them was like, you need to make this a book. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Um, but in radiation therapy, there's not that many resources about anything. Like there are books, of course, but I feel like in x-ray we had more options. Like there were review books that I used. Um, so I didn't think about it then, but when I got to radiation therapy and I like we had the resources that we had, I felt were a little bit limited and I was picking out what I needed to know from each book. So then I made my own notes and um, because of my success and my students or classmates success and their encouragement, then I was like, okay, yeah, I think I should make this available to others. So, from there, I reached out to a few reputable um, publishing companies, ones that like I've seen from X-ray or radiation therapy, and I either didn't hear back at all, or I heard that it was going to be too much work or too complex, and they didn't want to take the task on, uh, which was discouraging at first. I wasn't sure where to go and what to do, so I, I had a family friend who's a pub, um, not a publisher, a printer. So she kind of walked me through some things that I possibly could do. And I wound up going the route of self-publishing just because I believed in it so much. I didn't want it to stop. I didn't want it to end there. Um, so I wound up spending, I think, a year, if not a little longer, rewriting my notes into book form, making sure everything was like legally sound and accurate. It wasn't just like my notes now. It was something that other students can rely on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I went through the whole process of self-publishing and putting it out on Amazon. So it's it's basically only available on Amazon. It can be bought through like bigger stores that work with Amazon. So um, like Barnes and Noble, I believe works with um, Amazon. You can buy it on Barnes and Noble's website, but it's really actually through Amazon if you don't even realize that. Wow. So they're, they are my distributor. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'm in charge of everything else. I'm my own boss which, with that. Um, so it's it's been a unique process and learning experience, um, but definitely a rewarding one at that. Wow, that, that, that's amazing. And thank you for taking that risk. Um, so, so one of the things I always uh, recommend is notes because these fields are very um, complicated. And yeah. There's just so much information like, you know, you could have great memory, but man, there's just so much. And, and the, the note takings are, are, are so valuable. Um, but here you took it a step further and you shared your notes, right? And, and, and so, you know, you have the, 
the lecture, you have the PowerPoints and everything, but um, sometimes the, the powerful tool is the, the notes, you know, gain the perspective of a somebody else, right? Like, how, how do you see it? So, so thank you for that. So, um, radiation therapy, how did you get into that field? What, what got you interested into radiation therapy? So I don't have like an amazing story where people are like, oh, my family member went through this. Um, and it's like a beautiful story. Um, mine was more, I went to x-ray school. So I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was what, 17 or 18. And I shadowed in hospitals and realized what radiography or radiology, the whole scope was in general. So I gained interest in that. And I went to school for um, radiography or radiologic sciences. And during my schooling, we did projects on the different um, parts or elements of radiography, so like an umbrella. And I was introduced to radiation therapy at that point. And I just fell in love with it because I was already so interested with radiography. I thought the science behind it was so amazing and so unique. And then I can use that same science to help treat people's cancer. Like, that's amazing. Like, I don't know, it just felt so right for me. Um, so I graduated with x-ray, worked in x-ray for about a year before I went back to a school. I got a certificate in radiation therapy uh, because where I live in New Jersey, they do offer a one-year certificate after you have your x-ray. Now, different states have different ways of going about it, but that's the route I took. Um, and just, yeah, I just fell in love with, with it. As soon as I started doing clinicals, I just knew that this was a good career for me. And, and where did you start off? What, what was the, the setting that you were in? What was that like? Um, and maybe what were some of the challenges that you saw um, once you were in the field? So as a student, we rotated through multiple hospitals, um, which like they were all local hospitals. And I actually worked at one of those or two of those hospitals after graduation. Um, so they're more like outpatient based, uh, but they are affiliated with a hospital. Um, experiences that I had or challenges it's just I kind of I think it's kind of normal for most students or even new employees you always have those challenging co-workers or um, people at clinical so I, I hear this all the time from students now that their concern is like I have no outlet to ask my questions because I'm nervous that they are not gonna accept me and not knowing but um, and I've dealt with those people as well, like who wouldn't fully accept me asking their questions. Um, and it was nerve wracking because you're learning this like new thing and no one really wants to take the time to answer. Not nobody. There are a lot of helpful people out there. Um, but that was a big challenge in general and just figuring it all out and like having the tools and resources to help you figure it out. Um, but yeah, so I still work at a hospital as an outpatient center um, in New Jersey. Um, and I still, I still love it. We have crazy hours right now, but still we get to help and meet so many patients and hear all their stories beyond just what they're going through, like learning what different people are like and what they do. It's, it's been a really re rewarding process. And to be multimodality, I mean, it's not easy. Um, and you are, right? So you have x-ray, you have radiation therapy. Is there any other um, modality that, that you specialize in as well? Yeah, so I have my certificate um, or license in mammography. So when I was an x-ray tech, um, I also was trained on the job slash so you had to also do the formal part of um, mammography schooling. So they sent me to learn and then they trained me on the job. So I did that. I did that through schooling while I was doing therapy as well, um, but I haven't I haven't worked in X-ray probably after I worked in it maybe one or two years into therapy and then finally I was like okay I'm a, I'm a little overwhelmed maybe one job is good. <laughs> so um, I know radiation therapy um, has uh, you know prescription and dose calculation right. Yeah. Um, are these some things that are uh, in your book? And, and what can you tell us, a, a, a summary of that, right? Like what to expect? So prescriptions, um, they are written by the radiation oncologist. However, the radiation therapist has to know how to interpret and to know if something changes. So a prescription isn't final before the treatment. It can be, 
but it can also change um, throughout the course of treatment based on what the patient needs. So we have to be checking the prescription daily and making sure we are aware of what we're doing, what we're treating, because we want everything to be accurate and according to the doctor's plan. Um, now, the treatment plan is not um, a responsibility of the radiation therapist. That's actually the uh, responsibility of a dosimetrist. So it's a little bit different of a specialty there. However, we are still responsible for delivering that plan. We're the ultimate people who are delivering the plan to the patient. So we kind of seeing it all together. Um, so we have to be able to interpret the plan and make sure everything is accurate. So, so treatments right now uh, with the pandemic, um, do, do you see any difference um, you know, right now with the pandemic or uh, pre-pandemic? Um, and somebody interested, like, what can they come out um, and expect um, in, in the field, whether there's a pandemic or no pandemic? <laughs> yeah, um, well, when the pandemic first hit, it was, uh, we were treating until about 10 p.m. at the location I work at. Um, so when the pandemic hit, we saw a loss in volume of patients because everyone was scared and staying home. So. I'm sure the same with radiography because it all starts with you guys, right? Like they all have to get diagnosed with imaging somehow. So people weren't going to the doctor and getting their diagnosis so that they, they didn't know they had cancer to get treatment. Um, so once things kind of opened up again, we saw a huge jump in uh, patients because they were all kind of waiting and having a later diagnosis. So that was a little change that we saw in the field. We had people coming with later stage cancers for their treatment, um, but still the um, more common treatments like breast or prostate, which aren't as late stage, they're pretty early on. So we had a mix of the two. Um, what else has changed is our PPE. I'm sure everyone's affecting, affected by this. We have to wear all of our PPE now. We have, right now we're wearing N95 masks and goggles where I, where I am currently. Um, the, the standards are changing constantly, so we just have to try to keep up. Um, but what people can expect is to treat uh, in a fast-paced environment while also delivering that care and not just the treatment itself, but also caring for the patient, feeling that empathy and creating connections so that they don't feel like they're patients, they feel like they're your friends, just somehow going through this process, but not making it feel so tough. Yeah, great answer. Great answer. Yeah. Um, so with radiology, it's, it's the being fast, but efficient. Yeah. Right? And at the same time, still manage patient care. So yeah, it takes a, a special person to do that. So technologists are, are uh, amazing to be able to manage that and at the same time, make it look easy. Yeah. Right. Cause, cause it could look easy. Um, so on average, how long does a does a you know an exam take in radiation therapy? So for on average, um, it depends on the site where you're working as well. I've seen as little as like 15 minutes to 20 minutes um, for your standard treatment. It takes a little time just because of setup and the imaging, which is interesting because it overlaps with radi uh, radiology. Like we're taking imaging to confirm our setup for our treatment. So they all kind of come together at this point. Um, for a higher dose, like um, we call it SBRT, stereotactic body radiation therapy, um, that can take up to 45 minutes to an hour, maybe longer, depending on, again, the facility and their protocols. So the higher the dose, the more the longer it takes. I know there's a lot of uh, interest in radiation therapy. It just probably not the most common one. Um, you know, usually maybe x-ray, um, maybe the first MRI, CT, I think, uh, follow from there. Right. Um, but if somebody is interested in radiation therapy and they know they want to go that route, um, what would you recommend to them or, or what's the best route to, to get into that field? There are so many different routes. Um, I see a mixture of students who are already in radiology who then want to pursue radiation therapy or people that are looking into both and don't know which one to do. So what I recommend to students or to potential students is to shadow first, see if it's a fit for you. 
because I wouldn't necessarily go only on the salary because a lot of people are like, well, this is how much they can make or um, that's like their main focus. But like I said before, like the patient care aspect is huge. So if it's not your fit, you can't just do it for the money because the patients are at stake here too. Um, after you shadow and realize that it's for you, I would search on the ARRT website or JCERT, J-C-E-R-T website for schools that are either um, close to you or something that would be interest of, of interest for you, um, not necessarily only in proximity, maybe you're willing to travel to go to your school or maybe there's an online school and a clinical um, site that is near you. So there's a lot of different options for students there. There are a few online only schools, but is that something that would be helpful for you? Some people don't learn as easily online, so something to think about there. Um, are you willing to travel then for an education? Do you want your associates? Do you want a bachelor's degree? Because we do have multiple options. And a bachelor's degree is not for this um, career path. An associate's level is entry level, um, but you can have an associate, you can have a bachelor's. So it's really what you desire. And you have to just kind of think about what you want for the long term. You know, radiology changes so fast. Like there's, it's yeah. constantly changing. Uh, where do you see uh, radiation therapy in the next three or five years? Um, do you see it, you know, being more common and slowing down a little bit? Like, what, what would you? What would be your predictions in the next three to five years? I don't think it's slowing down at all, um, especially with the advancements of imaging and diagnosing patients. Uh, I think we're going to see more early stage cancers being treated. Um, so more people are going, it's not that more cancer is going to be more pre prevalent. <laughs> it's going to just be easier to diagnose. So I think the field is going to be growing. Um, and yeah, the technology is always changing. Um, a newer modality is um, MRI-based Linux. So Linux is our, or linear accelerator, is our machine that we use. And newer machines have an MRI imaging capability. So there's going to be a lot of fusion between diagnostic techs and radiation therapy or radiation therapists. Um, so just the, the imaging and the ability to um, adapt, I think we call it adaptive radiation therapy. So they can create a plan then as the patient's body changes or the tumor changes, they adapt the plan during the process. So those machines are kind of limited. It's not that every site has those machines. So I think in the future, more machines or more facilities are going to have those types of machines. Wow, that sounds interesting. Uh, so it, it sounds like it's worth pursuing, right? Oh, or, or, Yeah, that, that's great news. Um, but absolutely, uh, radiology um, plays a big part. Um, I know it's not the, the most popular, you know, you have doctors and nurses, and then maybe we get mentioned somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, right? and nobody but, knows, uh, not even my family members are like, I, I think I get it, but they don't get it. But they don't get it. So, so how would you explain to them, right? Because it, it, there's so much that goes on. Yeah. But, but how would you explain to them? It, in, in the <laughs> shortest way possible, I say I treat cancer patients with a huge machine. There you go. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. Great. Um, you know, the the cancer treatment. Um, how successful uh, do you see it? Like, like, or how early do you start seeing, um, you know, a change? Um, is, is that with the first treatment, or is it not until the last treatment? Um, what can you tell us about that? It's it's different. It's not it's different for everybody, which is the hard part about this field that it's so patient specific, so tumor specific. There's so many different elements that go into it that it's not like a cookie cutter answer. Um, but for patients that are in like emergency situations and extreme pain, because um, we do treat tumors that are causing pain um, to alleviate or palliative cases. And that can take like, it could be as early as one treatment, um, or it could take a couple of treatments. Or some people, it might not work until after their treatments are done because the radiation is still working in their body. So unfortunately, I can't give you like a standard answer, but um, one's a little bit different there. Uh, <laughs> a lot of great information. Man. Yeah, it's, it's a, a packed field, that's for sure. But it's, it's also something I wanted to mention is because um, not many people know about the field, but 
um, how x-ray or radiology in general is so integrated with this field. Like when we're setting up our patient or the first step to radiation is a, a CAT scan. We, we have our own special CAT scan. It, it's a CAT scan machine. It's just the tabletop and the different things that we do before we do the scan are um, a little different, but we still use that same imaging technology. Um, and then every day before, before their treatments, not every single treatment, but we image. Um, and it depends on the different type of treatment or prescription, what imaging they required. But we are we're taking x-rays with KV sources to line them up, um, like I said before. But it's just it's just so cool, <laughs> cool to me. I'm such a nerd, but it's so cool to me that like mm -hmm. I, I got I went from x-ray to radiation therapy, but I didn't leave x-ray. I'm like, I'm still using all that knowledge that I had from that field to and applying it to radiation therapy. And there's some people that don't do x-ray first, which is completely fine, but it's a little bit harder for people who don't because they don't have that foundation of the imaging. So it's like all of our fields kind of mesh together, but we don't even realize it. The, a lot of people don't expect the physics and, and the, the math that's involved in x-ray. Right. Um, so we are working with radiation and we need to be able to capture that image regardless of the patient part size of the part. So we have to, um, you know, in a very uh, short time, be able to, uh, you know, come up with a, an amount of radiation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the calculations that we we do go over in the program, we're actually using them in the field. There, there's a lot of numbers involved. Uh, involved. So um, when we're comparing like the the math and stuff, um, obviously the physics are are, are different, uh, mm -hmm. but the math. Um, how much of the, how much more math did you see from X-ray, um, and then going to radiation therapy? Um, well, there is math, a lot of math involved in the schooling for sure. Um, day to day work, not as much. Like we do a lot of like shift math for like our table coordinates, um, but we're not doing the math for like KVP and MAS and like exposure techniques. A lot of that's more integrated into our machine. However, I do teach a course um, where I work for um, radiology for a radiation therapy student. Um, and I go over this stuff because not many people understand like they'll take this KV image and get a bad image and they don't understand why it's coming out the way it is. And what I am trying to teach and show up people is that you need to change your exposure technique to create this, a better image. It's not as interesting yeah. as radi uh, radiology, but um, it does play a, a huge part of it. Um, as far as like doses for the patient's treatment, that's definitely um, something we learn in school, but not as um, much our role that is responsible for that, that is definitely the doctor that um, does that part of it. So if somebody's not that great at math, they should still pursue, right? Don't, don't let that yes. you. Um, you. You're going to learn it. Um, you know, it'll be on the exam. Uh, right. But once you're in the field, um, it, it, it'll all make sense, right? It will come together. And there's a reason for it, right? Like you said, if the image doesn't come out right, it might not have been the patient. It, it, it might have been on our end. If somebody's just starting off, you know, where should they focus on? Like just the basic math or is there anything specific? Yeah. So as far as schooling and math there, um, there's a lot of different elements that you're going to learn. A lot of it is like inverse square law, which might be unique to radi radiation in general, like radiology, radiation therapy. Um, and then there's like direct proportion math. And there's really unique math for um, radiation as well. Um, there is going to be a lot more that you learn in school that you don't need to know for the registry purposes. It's just because I think they have to go through all the processes and what that math entails. Um, but recently, actually this year, I did publish a math or a calculations book. So I call it um, the Radiation Therapy Calculations Manual. So that one goes through all of the basic math that we need to know to pass our test. Um, because it's just, it's so unusual, I guess, com compared to like the math that we learn in high school or I don't know, any like general education classes that there's, it's just new for us. Um, and there's not a lot of books that break it down. So what I did in this book was I, I taught like about it, like why it's used. And then I went and broke down each 
equation, like what to do next, like the basic steps of the math um, with examples so that it's, it's like broken down as simply as you can, because I noticed from the years of tutoring or explaining things to students on social media that there was just like a misunderstanding of which formulas to use when and how to do them. So I created this manual to break it down as best I could to simplify it because maybe on the registry, there's 230 questions now for radiation therapy. Maybe we'll get like five math or up to 10 math. Like I don't know how they break it down. It's hard to definitely know, but I don't want students to feel like, oh my gosh, the math is, that's what held me back. Like math should be easy questions and answers in my opinion, because I've always just like love math. So I use this book as like an opportunity to help make it easier for other students as well. Awesome. That's awesome. So, so yeah, you're absolutely right. There's, there's only a handful of questions, but every student um, or every person's version of the state exam is going to be different, right? Yeah. They, they yeah. have to be ready for their set of questions. And, and yeah. here you're providing some guidance so they could be successful and, and um, get into the career that they want to. And, and get them yes. So that, that's awesome. Um, so what's in the uh, what's lined up in the future for uh, Laura Nappy? Where, where can we find you? Um, what platforms on you are, are you on? Oh boy. Okay, so <laughs> I'm on all of the platforms now. So I started off with Facebook. Actually, I made a Facebook group, um, Radiation Therapy Students. Um, so you can join that group, and if even if you're not sure if you want to do radiation therapy, you just want to see what other people are saying you're more than welcome to join i just started an instagram page and in, i think it was november when i first started it so that's radiate with laura um trying to share some tips and tricks and so i have my calculations book that's available on amazon I mean, my comprehensive review guide for the radiation therapy examination is also available on amazon however I'm so close to being done with the second edition of it. So what I did was I updated it based on the updated content specifications that the ARRT put out. And I also updated just all of the content in there because I wrote it like 2017, maybe when I was like kind of still fresh in the field. Now I understand things so much more, I felt like I needed to update the book to reflect that, like to explain things deeper so that students can understand it. Um, so that is coming out soon. I, I don't have a set date for it. I'm hoping for February 1st, but like I'm waiting on a few elements um, before I can give you a definite. Um, so those will both all be available on Amazon. Wow. Well, you're a rock star. I mean, thank you for everything that you do. Um, we're excited to, to follow you. Maybe we'll we'll follow up, right? We'll, we'll do this yeah. again and see. You know, what's yeah, going there. definitely. There's so um, many. Like I said, we're so integrated that we don't realize it that we can have so many conversations. Absolutely, and and we actually met through social media, right? And, and yep. we had a conversation uh, the other day about um, what we plan to do for the future. So I'm I'm really excited about 2022. Um, this is something we've been wanting to do. Uh, we were waiting on the release of your book and, and here it is like things are yeah. happening um, i'm really excited about it um i'm actually gonna um uh, give away one of your books right yeah. and, it, and it's gonna be signed mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, i'm super excited for that i'm checking the mail um <laughs> so go out support laura's what she's doing uh purchase her book reach out to her on social media um you know, if, if you're in the field, let your your classmates know, uh, and just be supportive because um, there's, you know, Laura's taking time from her busy schedule and, and she's trying to put this up together. Um, so, you know, any any last notes before um, we close it off? No, I think we covered so much here. Um, just basically, I hope everyone takes away from this that my main goal is to get everybody to understand this field more and be more passionate about it and do it, uh, whether it's x-ray or radiation therapy or any modality there is. Like, I think overall, it's such a great field. So if we can help you all succeed in any way, please let us know and we're here for you.